On this week, we're going to be giving you guys an update on the Waterbox 180.5, let you guys know how that's coming along. A bit more equipment has still been arriving. I'm still missing the main bulk of my shipment, which is going to be lights, uh, pumps, and wave makers. That's kind of what, what's holding it back a little bit, but not really. Good news is the sump is officially on its way. The replace, not the replacement, but the uh, custom sump for it. And um, I think next week I'll be able to update you guys on exactly what sump I went with. Also in this week, I'll be sharing you guys my experience on my first time building a stand for an aquarium. Uh, luckily, it's not one that's gonna hold a lot of weight or that needs to look super nice, but it's gonna be for the quarantine tank. So I think you guys are in for a real treat. Let's get right to it. This past week, this happened. As you guys are probably saying, wait, wasn't that tank on that stand? And wasn't that stand kind of complete? And wasn't everything ready to get water? Well, yes, it was. But one thing I made a very critical, well, I wouldn't say a too critical mistake, but I made a mistake in not leveling this thing properly. Now, what I mean by not properly, it has leveling feet on the bottom. Long story short, I left too much of a gap originally because I wanted to fit my hand down in the bottom if water or dirt ever did get under there. Big mistake because once I put the tank and the foam under this bamboo flooring settled, guess what? I had no more threads left on the leveling feet. Luckily, I have some great local reefing buddies that I was able to get together to come back and to help me get the tank back down. Luckily, this time around, I made sure to properly level it, also got me, uh, I believe that's a four foot level. Uh, so I noticed my level was about two feet. This one made it se seem to be a little bit more accurate. You can see the tank on this side. One difference I did do with the tank, and you may notice it, you're probably saying, oh shoot, the rock's in there. Well, yeah, I will say this is almost finalized. There's a few pieces that are propping it up that aren't there permanently. They're just being used to prop the rock up. But this is give or take what the scape is gonna look like. Now, of course, I'm gonna do a full video showing you guys how I came about with this scape. But I figured since the tank is down, this rock is very heavy, it'd be a lot easier to put it in the tank when it's obviously this low to the ground. I also made sure to put moving blankets. The reason I did that, typically I like to put sand, but the sand I have, it has, it's a live sand, so I didn't want to put that sand and then just have it sit there. So I went ahead and put some moving blankets. If for any reason any rock happens to tip over, it'll obviously save the glass. These rocks here on permanent, these here, so I can remove them. One of them did actually fall. Thankfully, I did have that blanket on, so it really saved the day. But I felt this was a great time to put the rock in there, make sure my spacing on the right was okay and I was happy with it, my spacing in the front, and as well my spacing on the left. This rock isn't even gonna be there, but you, you kind of get the idea. All in all though, I believe I'm very happy with how it's turning out. There's more than enough space for what I'm looking for. A good thing I found when doing this, and I really should be saving this for the aquascaping video, but I'll just talk about it, is I wanted to create a lot of contrast in the scape, but at the same time wanted to make sure acros had enough space to grow on the top. So I had to sacrifice a little bit of height, a little bit of contrast, but this way the acros will be able to fill in nicely down the road. While I also have the tank down, I'm gonna be doing the 80-20 bar that Reef Dudes uses. I'm sure you guys have seen the light bar he uses. I'm gonna kind of create a similar thing, but also now that I remove the tank, it's gonna make it a lot easier because the light bars, or not the light bar, but the whole 80-20 is gonna be mounted to the stand. It's gonna come up the middle reach over here and then be a bar from right to left where the lights are gonna hang off of. It's actually pretty good that I ended up having to remove the tank because like I said there, I figured there was a few more things I needed to do. So that's how the Waterbox 180.5 is doing. Like I said, it seems to be moving along a little bit slow, but like I said, I wanna do everything right. I don't wanna miss anything. So I'm really taking my time with it. You know, in the past I tend to move pretty quick but I've really learned to be patient, especially when with a tank that big, you don't wanna make any mistakes. Moving it would not be any fun, so I wanna make sure I get everything done right. That's gonna be it for the update. Next is gonna be, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I built a stand for quarantine. I'm probably not gonna say this is how you should be doing it. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I just wanna show you guys my journey. If I'm making any mistakes, let me know down in the comment box below. So let's get right to it.
So this is the quarantine stand finally complete. I had never in my life ever attempted to build a stand. This was my first time ever attempting to do it. I will say it wasn't very hard. I gotta say, if you guys are looking to do any type of woodworking, whether building a stand or just looking to do some DIY furniture, I highly recommend the jig. This jig really made my life so much easier. Without it, I could easily say it would have taken quite a bit longer uh, pre-drilling the holes, then getting the screw in there. I mean, that jig not only makes it easy, but as you guys can see, there's really no screw or screw holes visible for, you know, from, from the front end. The only ones that are visible, because there wasn't any way I could get them on the inside, the drill just wasn't gonna fit, are these one going here and one going there. But again, being a quarantine stand, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. I think the total time to build this took me about two hours. I, st I already sanded it, I do need to paint it. Of course, if it doesn't bug you guys, you do not need to paint it whatsoever. You can leave it just as it is. Uh, but me, you know, I like my stuff looking a certain way, so I will be painting it. I test fit the stand already on there. It actually fit very well. So what I'm gonna do now is we are gonna paint it. I don't think you guys need to see me painting it, so I'll just show you guys once it's fully wrapped up. It's done, it's complete. We got a total of three coats of paint. I felt two would have been okay, but I felt with the third one, it really sealed everything up. Uh, more importantly, if water ever does get on it, which it probably will, uh, I mean, it's pretty inevitable, right? It is an aquarium right above it. It's pretty well protected, I feel pretty confident. Then again, if it did get damaged, it cost me about $15 of material, so it really wouldn't be that bad. I made sure that it's nice and leveled, both front to back and right to left. And the way I did that is using some shims. It took a total of three shims to shim it up and get it perfectly. Because I mean, even if you cut every single thing perfect, this sla uh, concrete slab isn't perfectly leveled. Uh, so shims were gonna be needed no matter what. The good news is the quarantine is already up. Obviously it's not running. I do need a very cheap light. Uh, I think I'll look on Amazon to find a really cheap light. I will look for a sponge filter. I still need to order the copper power, um, the ammonia, the little C, uh, I forget the brand, but the little ammonia alerts that you stick on the inside, a heater and that's, oh, a heater and a air pump. And that's gonna be pretty much it. It's gonna be very simple, very straightforward. But again, I think we're gonna have uh, a, a lot better success obviously trying to keep the very expensive fish that I do want to keep we should hopefully have no issues here that's going to conclude this week's episode I really hope you guys enjoyed it more like I said it was really an experience for me I never built uh, one of these but using that jig I did get at Lowe's made it so much easier I actually have a few more plans not only for aquarium stuff but just for DIY and some stuff on the inside again really hope you guys enjoyed if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down in the comment box below I thank each and every one of you very much for watching as always happy reefing